Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through cervical ectropion. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash ectropion or in the gynecology section of the Zero to Finals Obstetrics and Gynae book. So let's jump straight in. Cervical ectropion can also be called cervical ectopy and cervical erosion. Cervical ectropion occurs when the columnar epithelium of the endocervix, which is the canal of the cervix, has extended out to the ectocervix, which is the outer area of the cervix that you can see on a speculum examination. This means the lining of the endocervix becomes visible on examination of the cervix using a speculum. This lining has a slightly different appearance to the normal ectocervix. The cells of the endocervix, which are columnar epithelial cells, are more fragile and prone to trauma. They're more likely to bleed with sexual intercourse. This means cervical ectropion often present with postcoital bleeding. Cervical ectropion is associated with higher estrogen levels and therefore it's more common in younger women and women on the combined contraceptive pill and also during pregnancy when there are higher circulating estrogen levels. Next let's talk about the transformation zone. And the transformation zone is the border between the columnar epithelium of the endocervix or the canal and the stratified squamous epithelium of the ectocervix, which is the outer area of the cervix that you can see on a speculum examination. The transformation zone is essentially a border between the two types of epithelium. When the transformation zone is located on the ectocervix, it's visible during a speculum examination as a well demarcated border between the two epithelial types. Let's talk about the presentation. Many cervical ectropion are asymptomatic and they're found incidentally during a speculum examination for another reason, for example during a smear test. Ectropion may present with increased vaginal discharge, vaginal bleeding or dyspareunia, which is pain during sex. Intercourse is a common cause of minor trauma to the ectropion, triggering episodes of postcoital bleeding. Examination of the cervix will reveal a well demarcated border between the redder velvety columnar epithelium that extends from the endocervix through the os or the opening of the cervix and the pale pink squamous epithelium of the ectocervix which covers the rest of the cervix. This border is the transformation zone. A Tom tip for you, it's worth looking up photographs of cervical ectropion and becoming familiar with their appearance. They're very common to see on speculum examination and could look alarming the first time you see one. Ectropion are not associated with cervical cancer in any way. It's worth getting familiar with distinguishing them from the appearance of cervical cancer. If you see one, always ask about smears and if you're in any doubt, get a senior opinion and consider referral for a colposcopy to look at the ectropion in detail. Finally, let's talk about management. Asymptomatic ectropion require no treatment. Ectropion will typically resolve as the patient gets older, stops taking the combined pill or is no longer pregnant. Having a cervical ectropion is not a contraindication to starting the combined contraceptive pill. Problematic bleeding is an indication for treatment of cervical ectropion, and treatment involves cauterization of the ectropion using silver nitrate or cold coagulation during colposcopy. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, left a comment or subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, it really helps. Zero to Finals is not just a YouTube channel, there's also a website with detailed notes, illustrations and questions, an Instagram account where new questions are posted every day to help you test your knowledge, books, flashcards and much more. I also have a personal channel where I share my thoughts and tips on learning medicine and you can find links to everything in the description of this video. See you next time.